By the way, my name is Gaira Juf, uh, Gambia international player from the under 23. Was playing uh, the past four or five years in Israel, and there was a year playing also in Belgium. Um, I was um, injured um, last season with a ligament crucial in, uh, injury, but now I'm getting back to fitness. I'm in my hometown now in Gambia. I just um, try to get my fitness back, also to chill with the family a bit before going back to sports to refresh my brain. Um, I'm 23 years old now. I just turned up yesterday, uh, 23 years. Um, waiting for more years to come. I guess that's okay. First. Happy belated birthday, Gara. Thank yes. you. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Odi. I'm uh, from South Africa, originally born in Congo. Um, I currently play for Glasgow City uh, in the UK. Uh, been playing there for um, for the past year or so. I've uh, I've played in uh, Finland and Spain. Um, yeah, just uh, been a professional footballer for a couple of years now, and uh, uh, yeah, it's been a great journey. Uh, I am married to an amazing, amazing Dutch man. So Holland is home when I'm not. Um, when I'm not uh, playing soccer. And uh, yeah, that's about sums up my life. How did you guys realize that you want to get into careers in sports and what was your journey like? We'll start, I guess we'll start with Gaira again. Yeah, um, um, it, was, it all started when I was a young boy playing for my school team. So um, I've never wanted even to be a football player or I wanted to be a lawyer, you know. Uh, but one day, um, there was this coach from the uh, yeah, the school team that uh, called me and told me that I have great potential, that if I work hard, I can make a living in football. Uh, she, he really made, some, uh, made me to believe something that um, many people did, didn't thought of me. You know, every time, and after I, I was playing very good in that tournament, then later, um, um, one day she, she was in a, she was in this private uh, van that people who goes in Africa, I forget how to call it, uh, Uber I can say, it. and she was hearing my name in the radio that I was doing great this this and that. Then from there she, when she came home she finally let me play football, but I really suffered uh, to convince her. She was one of the, uh, she was one of the main person that stopped me from football, beat me up on my body. Wow, but uh, thank God now I'm getting her blessings. And since then, um, after she told me that uh, it's okay now to play football, but I must uh, complete my schooling, I tell her that no problem. Since that day, a uh, blessing to keep me going. Um, even when I feel like going down, feeling like pushed down, um, because she was the only person that I was afraid and I was expecting to get um, a willing come from uh, a permission to go to play football. So when she gave me the permission, I said, no, now I have to enjoy myself to play what I want. Most exciting about playing abroad, the whole experience of living there. So what has been most exciting for you and what are some of the things that gave you like biggest culture shock once you got there? Okay, I can go first because it's bigger. Um, for me, what was what was the most exciting about playing in Europe? For me, it was just it was just the the idea of being in Europe. It's just like, especially like people in Africa knowing that you're playing in Europe is just like, I'm a sort of a celebrity, but sort of not. But uh, yeah, just the idea of being somewhere that you've always desired and that a lot of people back home desire where they desire to be. You know, it's it's absolutely amazing. So yeah, just yeah, the idea and the culture shock would be the the weather. The weather is so was really because I went to I will, my first my first place was in Finland and it was like the north of Finland, which wow. was like and I, I, I luckily I went there around April 
And even then, the whole place was covered in snow and it was still freezing. And I was thinking to myself, this is April. This is like the end of winter. Imagine how it is like in the middle. I'm just like, I wouldn't be able to survive. Luckily, I went there in April, which was the the end of winter. And I left there around November, which was the beginning of winter. So I got to escape the harsh reality of the winter. But uh, yeah, the weather was the biggest, you know, the biggest surprise. But um, but the most exciting part of it was was just being in that professional environment and just like getting paid to to run around with a ball. Um, what about you, Gera? Um, I guess we are both the same because uh, when I reach in Israel, uh, okay, it was not like cold. It was not that cold like in Europe, in Finland or in Belgium, but. Um, it was very tough. It's different from Africa. Like in my country, if it is cold, it's not that cold. So I was freezing. Like I was, I was playing. I was training in those three test uh, t- uh, trials. Wow, my teeth were beating with each other. Like g- 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 I, I don't even understand myself. I came home. I start having to pain. Then later on, I start to feel a bit uh, different in my body. But all with all this thing, I was I was still say to myself that I need to struggle, you know, because if I don't make it, I'm going back. And this was my dream. Many people that have this dream to come to go out, so I must try to prove it. So so now, if I have to go to play, yeah. I have to wear a jacket inside. And even before playing, I need to take this rum band to scrub it on my body to be hot. You know, after from that, I wear my underwear and everything put. We are heavy clothes so that I can be at least be a bit. But with, even with this, I can't because it was penetrating from everywhere, from the hair, from the ears, <laughs> from everywhere. But it There's was no my place to hide. Uh, challenges with, besides the weather, I would say, yeah, it would it would definitely also be the language, because um, my first time going to Finland in the north of Finland. Um, Majority of the players didn't speak English, so but like I, you know, like maybe four or so could spoke English, and with that is really difficult to build relationships, you know, in terms of building relationship on the field and off the field. So, so that that part was pretty. Uh, it was the same in Spain. Uh, the Spanish people not not a lot of the girls spoke English, um, so also them. It's really hard to build any type of relationship um, when when quite a few, quite a handful of the players don't speak English, which we tend to make the time there not less, not 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 enjoyable, but less enjoyable. Um. So, given both your experiences, what are some measures you think could be taken to make the situation more inclusive for migrants when they go to a different country to play sports? you know the uh, people to understand each other uh, especially we local players when we have to go out um, uh, to other country uh, for football or anything we have to know these languages like me i don't know how to speak dutch i don't know how to speak um, french that good but um, i can use english to communicate with some of these uh, some uh, because anywhere you go in the country in this world sorry you will find people that speak English. For the weather condition, um, it will be very difficult because there is no, I don't see any place in Africa that is cold as even in Israel, not in, in Belgium or in other country. Ode, do you think there's anything that could, make, could be done to make it more inclusive? Um, one, of, one of the th- things that I can think of that are different to what uh, Gara said would be... Um, for the teams to be more accommodating to their foreign players, and what I mean in terms of that is like, you know, especially especially like if the foreign player is coming in the beginning of preseason, just like to um, to educate the rest of the team, like like that that the, that foreign player can like help educate the team in terms of like about their customs, about their culture, so that throughout the season, when when like if they see the player eating something different or um, doing something different that they don't consider it as weird just because it's different. So, so I, I feel like maybe to, I don't, it, I don't think it will eliminate um, 
the the misconception or the miscommunications that can happen between foreign players and the home base players, but it could maybe accommodate and help help the the natives understand those players a little bit. So like for example, if there's let's say if there's like four different nationalities that are coming into a team. So then maybe like in, in the beginning of a preseason, like the you know, during like a team building, but the those those foreign players can like do like a presentation to to present the team to just teach the team about their culture, about where they come from, the weather, the, the type of food they eat, um, what are some of the weird weird things that 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 the natives might think and find weird. I think I feel like that could maybe help the understanding and the integration of um, of foreign players into 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 those countries uh, because when they're coming into those countries and into this into those teams, that team is 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 most times is 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 um the most time that the foreign player would spend with a group of people and for a long period of time because a season can take up to six to eight nine months and like and for that long to if for, for for a person to be for that long of a period in an environment where people don't understand them where people miss just misunderstand the things that they do it can it can you know it there can be there can be some a lot of conflict can arise out of that was like if there's some understanding that that the native players are trying to understand because the native people only need to maybe understand a hand a handful of um a handful of foreign players and for those and for the foreign players to also try to understand the country that they're going into the customs you know the things that are taboo the things that maybe would um in their own country wouldn't be rude, but in this country would maybe be rude and those kind of things. Just to, to, for there to be some kind of correspondence and understanding of both cultures and not just one one group is understanding the other, that it can be like vice versa. Um, uh, a big point because the food, it happens to me uh, when I came, in, um, when we were going for Europa League qualification um, against the nation Petersburg. I went to the to the camp in the time the time to lunch. After the last meal before the game, like two three hours, I went on uh, taking a lot of cake. So all of them we are looking at this time. I, mean, I didn't know. I never knew that I should not even eat cake. So it was when everybody looked at me, I was scared. You know, I was I didn't even know it was my first time. So I think food also food wise is good to you know to to help the people to know the culture because in Africa, I can eat like four o'clock heavy rise and go straight so i don't care but um these things are full in uh in europe like the food wise we also we have a few foreign players on the team right now and we have a player from portugal and sometimes she eats like her rice with banana on top and like a lot of like the british people or a lot of the players is like that is so weird who eats banana on rice but it's just like it's not weird it's just different you know it's you know you just you're not used to it but like I feel like that kind of misconception could have been avoided if the players would have had a chance to understand the 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 other players' culture, you know, the way that they eat and things like that. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, if you could explain a little bit about the migration process, if it was easy. Uh, to obtain a work permit or it was like challenging uh, what was your experience regarding that aspect and uh, regarding i mean a uh, legal aspect if you just can explain a little bit it will be perfect in most countries uh -huh. that i've been at sorry you can go ahead yeah. okay i'll go um that in most countries that I've been at, um, it's actually been pretty smooth because um, mm -hmm. they've uh, the countries you know have a really smooth process of um, you just you you applying for um, you you would be a full time footballer so you're applying for a permanent work residence. It was all set up by the club. Um, mm -hmm. All I needed was to bring my passport. Um, 
also my uh, how to call it again my medical certificate to show that i'm healthy there's no sickness with me and also my police certificate to show that i have no criminal records that was the only thing it was not challenging i went on monday i got it on wednesday but um when i was going to georgia it was quite difficult i see i understand uh, I just had one uh, more question. Uh, is not like related to the previous question. I wanted to ask if you feel uh, welcome in the society, not just in a club or in a team, in that country, in that society, as a migrant, as a like foreign players. How you can describe that aspect of your life? <laughs> Okay, um, um, when I went to Israel, it was um, challenging because um, um, some of the players uh, uh, didn't welcome me, especially the players that knows that uh, players that didn't play, players that are you know, knows that when I come to the club, it will be challenging for them. This is this happened, I think, everywhere. You know, they start feeling uh, they were avoiding me. Some of them even talk to me. I was trying to make friends when I came because uh, if I make friends, it will be very easier for me to you know to cope with the situation, to know the countries, you know, to know a lot of things in the countries. But I didn't be, I didn't have any friend, a uh, few friends, uh, just only in training camp. After training camp, I didn't go out for nearly one year. One year, I don't even know where Tel Aviv is, and I was in Tel Aviv. I know nothing about Tel Aviv. Only when I go to the supermarket to make something or to do this, you know. Uh, for me. Um... Actually, I, I, was, I think maybe females, um, uh, in the female aspect, maybe it's, it's slightly different. I think because I think with the men, maybe the competitiveness overshadows their ability to, you know, just to be emotionally uh, mature, you know, in, in some sense. But I've, with, with the females, um, honestly, in most countries I've been at, it's always been, um, the girls have always been welcoming, um, even... In, in 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 Spain in particular, like because it in Spain was a little bit different because because the Spanish natives they didn't speak much English, so it was hard, you know, for them to be as welcoming. But there was a group of us that were foreigners. So they they just opened up their arms and been like, Come join our group, you know, this is the deal and like we go to eat together after matches. So like you you at least had some kind of community. I think if I was the only foreign player in that environment, I would have struggled a bit uh, because the Spanish natives, you know, they already, they, they were living there, they had their families there, they had their own lives. So most, most times in those cases, they don't necessarily think too much about like, you know, inviting people into their home. Um, but, uh, but in most instances in female teams, um, they tend, they tend to be really like warm and, um, and welcoming and wanting to you know just i guess because females are just more social beings in general uh especially emotionally and talkative um because men don't really talk that much you know those kind of things. so females are just like so like ah, as a new person hey, yes another person to join our chat group chat group uh yeah so basic yeah no it's um it's been pretty welcoming um i would say though you know just like in finland it's in Finland, like one of my first, in my first team, like in the beginning, they'll be quite welcoming. But then as the season goes along, you'd find yourself kind of isolated because, um, because they would think like, oh, they've done their job. Now you can look after yourself for the rest of the season. And then uh, you find yourself, you know, for the rest of the season, um, then it's not, it's not as inclusive. You know, they don't invite you to everything that they do. But in the beginning, they can be quite inviting and open just because they want to make you feel welcome. They want to make you feel comfortable. But uh, when you do come become accustomed and comfortable, then you're sort of left on your own. Uh, that I only experienced in, in my first season in Finland. Um, in most of the other teams I've been at, it has been pretty consistent throughout the year. So I think the last question would be, what advice would you give to young people who are hoping to pursue careers and get to professional levels like you have in different countries? Uh, okay, um, for me, um, like um, I have um, time, uh, good time and bad time in football. 
especially the past two years. So one of the most important thing I will advise the young migrants that are going there is to you know to know uh, to know where they are going, to know the what type of agent they're gonna work with, because these agents, some of these agents, they are cook, and to know the kind of teams they are taking them to, was to you know to try to help these young players, like the young players are going 17, 18. Uh, to know the agent they are imposing themselves, you know, the contract they are going to sign, you know, because most of the players going from Africa, they don't have even guardian, they don't have the guardian. Uh, I've experienced this by myself, you know, it was an experience for me that I, I witnessed, that I face, that I go through, that I wouldn't want other players or other uh, African players to go through. So that's why even in Gambia right now, I go out to academics, uh, young players where they are to advise them about this, you know, to show them that uh, whatever they're going, let them consider someone educated, uh, educated in sport or someone or their parents to help them. Let no one sign any contract with them, you know, to help them to talk with them. Hey, this is my job now because I don't have anything to do at the moment, just to train, to go to some of the kids, to advise them to help themselves not to get into mess not uh, let them not let people to lead them into temptation or to mess you know so to help them feel the better life of football and to know that they can make it also on football by the way so i'm just sharing a little bit um uh, what i've gone through and i will not want any of my african brother or sister to go to in this kind of situation because i know it was one of the this 2019 till now is one of the worst years in my life worst so I wouldn't want any other guy to lead uh, to go into this. So I have I I take the step to use uh, my time of rehabilitation to help to uh, to educate some of the kids to help them to know what to do and know what to do. For me, one of the biggest advice I gave a uh, young female is uh, aspiring footballers. Um, they're like for us especially african female footballers my number one advice i would always say like go through the route of getting your degree and then go to pro life because we we really don't have the luxury like the men to go straight from high school into professional league the men can afford to do that because because of the salaries that they get but we really can't you know in terms of like as Soccer is a, is a short-term career, and as a female African footballer, um, skipping your education and going directly into a professional sport, like anything can happen. It's not a guaranteed career. It's not guaranteed that you're going to, you know, do like 10, 15 years. It's not guaranteed that you will continue to, your salary will continue to, to increase. It's not guaranteed that you're going to be well looked after with the correct agent and be able to to have a sustainable um, living condition, living salary that you because most Africans you're also sending money home, and you know female female footballers like the salaries that you get. By the time you send money home, you literally like only have enough to feed yourself. So having having to do that because I know like um, quite a few um, in South Africa as a, as a young as a young player, there used to be quite a few. Uh, female players that used to play abroad in Europe, in Russia, um, and like in Sweden, when they w when they went back to South Africa, they they went back to square one. They were worse than when they left South Africa. So they literally went back to square one. Like their lives did not improve in terms of like economically or financially. Most because most of them literally did not have any a lot of education. So and and the money that they made was not like enough to invest and was not enough to save to a point where they can go back home and live comfortably. Men, the men can afford to do that, but we female, unfortunately, we are completely in a different bracket bracket because our game is still growing. Um, the the salaries are not where it where it can be or where it's going to be yet. So like I really advise any young African footballers like. The professional career, it's not going anywhere, but your education, like, don't neglect it while you are pursuing your professional career.
Oh, most, 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 most people, a lot of European players, they do go from high school into their professional career, but then they are studying, they are studying during that time. Like they, they still, a lot of, they don't, they're not neglecting because they know like this career we have, it's short, you know, it's financially very short and like, you know, you need to have a broader vision of your life. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I was like, I would, I would advise any African female footballers to go get your education like you can get a full ride in America and then after that the world is your oyster or if you choose to go directly into pro life don't completely neglect your education continue to pursue it in some way online or you know or in the country that you're at try to get some sort of diploma so that when you by the time you're done with your career you're not going to be you know you won't be in the same position as a as a male professional footballer you know going home you go you you're financially most most females are not going to be any better off so at least at least then you would have built up some kind of educational you know credentials that you can go home and you won't be starting back to square one that you can go home by the time your career is over you will have some sort of like qualifications under you that you're able to build a life that you're able to continue the lifestyle that you that you're used to and and the financial means that that can sustain you for for the rest of your life okay. great um thank you so much both, um all of you for joining for answering the questions and yeah i hope you get well soon Gaira. thanks Gilada, for